Good morning, y'all. Happy Tuesday. Happy Taco Tuesday. My name is Faye. I am a hair therapist. Um, I'm also the founder of a community of women who support, empower, and motivate each other through faith. Um, you can join us by searching on Facebook, Sisterhood Formed by Faith. We will be so blessed to have you. Um, I'm feeling like Paul this morning. I want to encourage you to stay faithful, to stay committed to your faith, to keep your eyes on your faith. Because as you see, the title of this message is your faith will not fail you. Come on now. If you know, then you know. I want to start with prayer um, just to invite God's presence, although he has already gone before us, but to let him know that we are thankful to be in his presence on tomorrow, this morning and we are in expectancy for this word on today to speak to our situations, to speak to our circumstance, to be exactly what we need to push us this week. Um, so Father God, we just thank you for your presence on today. You said we're two or more are gathered, that you be in the midst, Father, and we are so thankful that you are in the Missed, oh God, we ask that you um, come on to this word and that you give me the words to speak to your people, oh God. I give you full authority to use my mind, use my mouth, oh God, and that your people would see none of me, oh God, but hear all of you. We ask that you break any covenant that we have with the enemy willingly and unwillingly, Lord. We ask that you will remove any spirits, any negativity, anything that comes up against this word, get into you, Father, and your son Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Um, and y'all, I feel like praising them on today. Do you hear me? So I just want to sing two lines of this song. And if you know it, sing it with me, child. I love to lift you up. We bless your name. Come on now. Sweet Jesus, 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 Jesus. I love to lift you up. We bless your name. Come on. We magnify your name. Sweet Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on. It made me think about last night. My thoughts was up against me. My situation was up against me. My circumstance was up against me. But I made an altar right at that couch. You know what? And I cried out to him. And I worshipped him. And I sung that song. I bless your name, Lord. Um, we love to lift you up. And um, my spirits was truly lifted. So I wanted to just encourage somebody that, you know, the pastor might not always be available. The bishop ain't available 24-7. But God says, I'm available whenever you need me. That's why I send people on videos for you. That's why I created YouTube. That's why I have online service and e-churches and all that. He said, because I want to meet you right where you are. I feel like, you know, preaching today, y'all. <laughs> I feel it in my spirit. Um, we are in the seventh day of November and God is moving. He is working. He's the same God then that he is now. And I'm feeling like Paul this morning, child, when he was writing in Philippians and it says the priceless value of knowing Jesus Christ. And I want to speak from that title real, real quick before we dive into the word the priceless value of knowing Christ. Come on now, it costs us some things to know some people. Come on now, it costs us some, some things to be with some people. Come on now, but it's priceless. Come on now, it's no value. Come on now, nothing we could pay to be uh, in Jesus' presence, to have Jesus as our Lord and Savior. It's nothing that we can do to be deserving of it. Come on now. Um, he said, I'm just obeying my Father. I must be about my Father's business. Come on now. There's no amount of money that you could pay me to get on these videos. I'm doing it because I must be about my Father's business. It's no amount of money that you can pay me to live a certain lifestyle for Jesus. Come on now, they pay us to live these accustomed lifestyles that we want to get accustomed to. Come on now, but you couldn't pay me, come on, to live another way than how I'm living for Jesus. Um, and we starting in Philippians chapter 3. Um, and it says, don't mind if the air clicks on and off, child. You know, I get a little hot. Uh, so I'm one of the people that got my air on in the winter time because I ain't got no ceiling fans. Anyway, <laughs> it says Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. Whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. I never, come on now, I never get tired of telling you these things, and I do it to safeguard your faith. 
I never get tired of coming on here to give somebody a word. Come on now. Because it encouraged me to stay in my faith. And I want to encourage somebody else to stay faithful. To stay in their faith. Come on now. Your faith is currency. Your faith is hope for the things that are unseen. Come on now. To make them seen. Glory to God. Um, your faith will not fail you. And then it goes down to verse 2. So Philippians chapter 3, verse 2, it says, watch out for those dogs, those people who do evil, those manipulators who say to you, you must be circumcised to be saved. For we who worship by the Spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised. We rely on what Jesus Christ has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort, though I could have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could. Come on now. Indeed, if others have reasons for confidence in their efforts, I have even more. Come on now. And I want to speak from you from Philippians, from what Paul was saying. Um, and if you go down some verses, um, it talks about how he is not perfect, even right here. Because what it means to be circumcised, we see it all the time with men and boys. You know, when they're born, they got to get circumcised. And it's just removing of the extra skin. Um, it supposedly makes it easier to clean and some other reasons. But I want to talk to talk to you right from there. Uh, the removal of extra skin to make it easier to be clean. Come on now. God don't need you to make it easy for him. Come on. He want to meet you right where you are so he can show you nothing is too hard for me. God don't want you to change your skin color or to change this or to change something about you in the flesh. Because when we're talking about skin, we're talking about this flesh. Come on now. Not the spirit, but this flesh. What we see in the flesh. Oh, I must do this to be saved. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to stop doing this. Oh, I got to turn this around. Oh, I got to no, Jesus said, just invite me to in right where you at. He, and he said, I'm going to change. I'm going to organize. I'm going to replace according to what I would have. Come on now. Um, so it's just saying, don't listen to people who say do this and do that and do that. Because just like I talked about um, in so many videos, I remember when I first got saved, um, baby, and, and saved, <laughs> hey, it's a lifestyle. Come on now. I'm never going to not need to be saved for, from some things because I might not be where I was at. I might not be doing what I was doing then. Come on now. But it's something in my now that Jesus can still show up and save me from. Glory to God. Come on, Holy Spirit. Let's do this thing. So I remember being in that um, in, in a relationship and I said, you know what? I can't get out of this by myself. Um, and, and I remember I would I wasn't even going to church at this time, y'all. I didn't know the books of the Bible. I'm just praying and talking to God. I'm just reading what I will read. I'm just being faithful, being consistent. I'm on my knees. I'm in the shower. I'm singing when I don't have the words to pray, child. Um, I'm watching online sermons, online people, you know, like myself that may not have the title. Come on now, but got the word that God will use to motivate you. Come on. In the last days, I will pry my spirit unto all flesh. Come on now. He didn't say just this person, just this person. He said all flesh, whoever makes themselves a willing vessel. Come on now. If I can do it, you can do it too. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for meeting us right where we're at on today. So I just remember saying, you know, I can't do this without you, God. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't know what it looks like, you know, beyond this. And, and I'm still, you know, doing some things like smoking weed. I'm still smoking weed, but getting up to pray um, and, and doing all type of stuff. And people would, might tell you, oh, Jesus ain't talking to her. She be smoking. Oh, Jesus ain't talking to him. He be drinking. Come on now. He said, I will pry my spirit unto all flesh, whoever makes they self. And he removed it from me. You know, I have a testimony now. I don't even crave what I used to crave no more. I don't even worship what I used to worship. Some things that used to be a part of my routine ain't a part of my routine no more. Some things I was making a ritual. Come on now. I don't even uh, worship and do no more. Glory to God. By the grace of God, it wasn't a person because my mama couldn't tell me to lead a relationship. My granny, my daddy couldn't tell me. Nobody could tell me. But when I invited Jesus in, I said, save me from what I need to be saved from. I didn't just call out this relationship or this drug or this person or this job or that. I said, come in and save me. Save me from all the things, God, that you see an opportunity to save me from, that you will save me from in this moment. Come on now. Because you got to, some things is priority. Come on now. Some things is crucial. Some things is an emergency to release. Come on now. So uh, when we don't know what's urgent to release, when we don't know what's urgent to remove, we have to allow God to step in. We can't rely on people saying this is what you must do and you got to do this and you got to do that. Um, and as I go down, y'all, I'm going to have me a little water because I told you I feel a preach. So I feel a 
I feel it coming up. Do you hear me? <laughs> Woo. And I love this last part. Woo. Well, I'm going to start right here and then I'm going to say something about that last part. But it caught my eye right here where it says, we rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. Come on now. We don't rely on what we done or what other people didn't done for us. People will fail us. Uh, but we rely on what God has done for us. I keep my faith sometimes just by knowing, okay, when I was hungry, Jesus made a way for me. When I cried out to him and I couldn't do it, he came through. Come on now. And I might not be in the same situation. It might not be the same circumstance, but I know he will show up for me time at the time at the time again. Um, and as we go down, um, and it says, though I could have confidence in my own effort. And before that, it says we put no confidence in human effort. Come on now. Cause we have, I can't speak for y'all. Come on now. But in order to have confidence in me, I have to look at what I'm producing in the flesh. Like, you know what? I get on here. I record these videos. So many people um, tell me they blessed by my word. So many people be like, dang, Faye, you got it. You got it. But um, I can't be confident in myself because I have to think on a spiritual level. Um, I can't get so high up on what I'm doing in the flesh, you know, that I put confidence in myself uh, because the glory truly, truly, truly belongs to God. I have to always remember that time that I was in that relationship, that I was in that hurt, that I was in my mess, and he came and showed up for me. When I was failing myself, my faith did not fail me, and I put my faith in him, not in what he can do, not in this, not in what I want. I put my faith in Jesus. Come on now, because I don't know what he's going to do in my life. Come on now. I'm, I'm hoping that he would uh, do it according to, you know, my list of requests. Come on now. But I I'm giving him full authority to do it according to his list, according to his riches and his glory. I put my faith in Jesus Christ, knowing that he already paved the way. Come on now. He said, I already been there. I already done that. I already overcame that. I already was about my father's business. And the Bible tells us that we do greater works than him. Glory to God. I want to be like you, Jesus. And as I talked about in the beginning, how Paul said, um, a little bit down in the chapter, Paul said um, that he was not perfect. Come on now, because I'm not perfect. And I took some notes to make sure I don't forget nothing. Because this word really like was, was working through my spirit. Do you tell me? Do you, do you feel me? <laughs> Look, it's just hitting me right now in this moment. Like when I think about the goodness of, of God. Um, and even in this passage where it says, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm not putting my confidence in myself uh, because I don't want to be like me. Come on now, because you might not know uh, what's in my closet. Come on now, you might not know what's in my heart. Come on now, but I do and Jesus does. So I'm not trying to be like me. I'm not trying to be like them. I'm trying to be like Jesus Christ. Come on now, the only one who was perfect. Come on now, you are who you hang around. I know y'all heard that birds of a feather flock together. If your circle broke, you're going to be broke. Come on now, if, if ain't nobody in your circle doing something different, if ain't nobody in your circle trying to worship God, come on now, you're going to think you're the only one. You got to get around some people. Come on now, you got to get around some warriors. Come on now, you got to get around some millionaire mindset people. They might not have the money, but they got the mind. Come on now, you can't be stuck with them with them like-minded people who don't see a purpose, who don't see a future, who don't have a plan. Come on now, you got to be around what you're trying to be and what God is putting in your spirit, and you got to pray that he put you around them the right people. I don't know who that was for because that was not a part of my notes. Glory to God. But God is telling you to get away from some people. He about to, baby, and that's why my house look a mess right now. Can we, can we stop right here real quick? That's why my, matter of fact, can we get started right now? Not can we stop. Can we get started right here? Come on now. So that's why my house looking like this. I didn't rearrange my closet because I'm making room for new things. I've been hanging on to some clothes time after time again. God said, that's why I can't bless you because you hanging on to some things. Come on now. The things that you wore last season. Come on now. The people that you was around last season. The people who helped you last time. The people who was there for you last time. God said, I'm trying to elevate you. Come on now. I'm trying to remove and replace with greater. Come on now. Greater according to my plan. Greater that gets you closer to my purpose. Greater that gets you closer to heaven. Glory to God. Because that's ultimately what should be the plan. And when, because y'all, this message, it was right on time for me. So I'm praying 
And I, and I know that it's for you. Come on now, because God won't have me get on this video. My faith would not fail me. Even when I didn't want to get up here and, and get on this video, God kept brewing this word in my spirit. Said, come on now, you got to release this because the right person going to come across this video, baby, and they're going to put their faith where they mouth at. Come on now, if they got to exit out of every relationship, if they got to leave the job, come on now. Woo, glory to God. You better speak life over yourself. You better speak healing over yourself. Whoever you are, come on now. Your faith will not fail you. Come on now. I feel like it's brewing in your spirit too. Come on now to be faithful, to put a little more faith with that mustard seed. You may hang on to that mustard seed. It's time to add a mustard seed to it. Not just one mustard seed of faith. Now you got two. God said, I'm trying to increase your faith. And when I increase your faith, when you increase your faith in me, I can increase your favor, glory to God. And when I increase your favor, come on now. It's gonna manifest come on in your life in your flesh come on glory to god god said increase your faith i'm gonna increase your favor and that's gonna increase your flesh come on glory to god oh i'm just looking because the word came in but we ain't gonna worry about that and don't worry about what you're doing what you ain't doing what you this and what you that i think about the movies and I'm going to get off here, y'all, in about 20 minutes. Uh, not we at about 20 minutes, glory to God. Not in about 20 minutes. So we got about another five or so minutes. Anyway, so catch this in your spirit. Come on now. Challenge your mind. If you think it, you can touch it. Come on now. Challenge this. So I watched movies. And I'm a lifetime queen, child. <laughs> but the, the rich kids or the famous kids or whatever you would call them, the parents is always working. Um, they always doing other things. Like, if I imagine God in the flesh, come on now, he's our daddy, he's working, um, if we called him, of course, he would be there, and things like that, and like, the bishops, or the pastors, or our mentors, our therapists, however you want to look at it, they the parents, right? So, your parent ain't always available, but they know you're going to need some safety, they know you got to get to soccer practice, they know you're going to want to go to the mall, so they send you with these bodyguards, um, and the bodyguards protect you. They report back to the parents. They keep a keep an account for you at all times. Um, woo, glory to God. This word blessing this year. So think of grace and mercy. That when God says, My grace and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Grace and mercy are the two bodyguards. When I see them in the spirit, they big and they strong and they protect us and they guide us. When we feel like we can't hear the voice of God, grace and mercy shows up coming out and they save us and they take us black back to right where we belong. And I think about last month, baby, I was going through some things. Glory to God. And grace and mercy showed up. And they brought me back to the Father. Come on now. And they explained some things to God. Come on now. Because his grace and mercy is sufficient. Woo. Don't worry about falling or when you run away or when you go astray or when you're hurting and you're looking for things of the world. Do not go astray. I mean, do not get worried. Come on now, because grace and mercy is with you. They will keep you. They will protect you. If you run away, call grace and mercy. I think about the movies. The little girl, she was doing drugs and she was at this party and it started to get chaotic. She was so scared. She couldn't call um, her parents. I can't remember if it was mom or dad or both or whatever, but she called the bodyguard and she like, this is my location and they pulled up with the black truck, you know, and they came, they got her out safe, got her back home safely, um, making sure the paparazzi didn't see her. That's what God does for us. Come on now, I done did some things in my life time. Come on now, that grace and mercy, they covered me. Glory to God. They covered me and they got me back to God safely. So I want you to remember that at all times you are not alone. Come on now. You don't got to worry about telling somebody your business. Begin to call out for grace and mercy. Grace and mercy, come and get me. Grace and mercy, I need your help. Grace and mercy, get me back to the Father. Grace and mercy, I can't see myself through this. Grace and mercy, I don't know what I didn't got myself into. Glory to God. I thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy, that it is sufficient. Come on now, that it protects us, that it keeps us, that it gives us guidance on how to get back to you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Um, And that's my word on today, that your faith will not fail you and that grace and mercy is with you. Grace and mercy, it will keep you. Grace and mercy will be with you. Grace and mercy will protect you. It will guide you. It will get you back right on your square safely. Come on now, they got that little girl back in her room and tucked into bed safely that no hurt, harm, or danger was done to her. And God already tells us no weapon formed against you shall prosper, whether it be the addiction trying to hunt you, whether it be the relationship trying to hunt you, whether it be lack 
back trying to hunt you, whether it be poverty, trying to hunt you, whether it be those sexual desires, trying to hunt you. Come on now, righteous man falls seven times, but he get back up. Glory to God. Grace and mercy. God sent me on this video. Come on now with grace and mercy to find you right where you are, to meet you right where you are. God said you can put it down and turn away now and he'll be waiting for you like the father of the prodigal son. He was waiting with open arms. The boy had spent all his inheritance. He was out there laying and playing with the pigs. Come on now. But his father had open arms said, and I'm still here for you. And they put the robe on him. Come on, child. And I believe they threw a party for him. This is God with this message. Come on now. He said his arms is open. Come on now. His arms ain't too short that they can't reach you. You ain't been out there doing too much wrong that he don't care for you. He says not anything that you can do that his grace and mercy will not cover you. Come on now. And if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to say right now with me that, Lord Jesus, I accept you in my life, Lord. I accept you as my Savior who died on the cross for my sins and your blood covers me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. And no matter what I was doing or where I was at, God, that you would never leave nor forsake me and that your grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I submit my life unto you. Tell him, I submit my life unto you. Submit yourself under him. We submit to a lot of things, but God is telling you to submit to the son today because who the son sets free, baby, is free indeed. You might have failed. Come on now. You almost was in shackles. You almost was back in bondage. But God said, I sent this word to you today to release you, that you are free, and he wants you to remember that you are free. Come on now. He saved you from that. Come on now. He already um came and conquered that, that you can put it down and you can walk away from it and you can pick up where you left off. Glory to God. God said today somebody's going to pick up where they left off. You getting ready to pick up where you left off. Forgetting those things that are behind. Forgetting the things that you did a second ago. God said forgetting the things that you did yesterday but you're going to pick up today where you left off. Come on now. And for some of us we're going to pick up today where we begin and glory to God because you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He said I'm about to come through and I'm finna to save you from whatever it is that was trying to shackle you. That was trying to get you in bondage. Some things that was trying to take you out. God said, I'm coming in right now and I'm freeing you from it. I don't know about y'all, but I feel a release in the spirit. I feel chills. I feel something breaking up off of me. Glory to God. So God, we just thank you right now, Father, for your presence. We thank you for stepping in our situations right now, oh God. We ask that you come in, oh God, and that you conquer it, oh God, and that we know that we have the victory, oh God, and we ask that you begin to show us right now in the flesh, oh God, what we are feeling in the spirit, oh God. We might not can see, oh God, but we we can feel it, oh God, and we ready to see it in the flesh. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I thank y'all so much. Again, I am the founder of a group, Sisterhood Formed by Faith. If you are a woman, my sister, come on now, make sure you go on Facebook, search Sisterhood Formed by Faith, and join our community in empowering, supporting, and motivating. Come on now. We can use you in that group. We want to be blessed by your testimony. We want to use your strength where we are weak at. I also will leave in the description all the information on um, what to search. Uh, you can write me on my socials and send me some encouragement. I will leave a way to sow into this word, to sow into this ministry where there is good ground. Baby, you want to sow so you reap the harvest and you remember this day as your miracle day, as the day I gave my life to God and you sow into it because what you sow, you will reap. And if you don't have the monetary value to sow, leave me a comment, send me a direct message, sow me a seed and saying, you know that word, bless me. Do you hear me? So it can encourage me to keep on being in obedient. It can encourage me to stay faithful in my faith. It can encourage me that my faith will not fail me. Glory to God. Um, so I love y'all. I was so blessed to come on here and share this word with you guys. Y'all don't know what these videos do for me in my life. Cause like I said last night, I had a trying night, but we've been made endure for a night. Come on now. But how many of us know that joy it comes in the morning, baby, and our joy is here. I love y'all, and I will see y'all in the next video.